Evening, everybody. Hope everybody's well this evening. I can see some regular regular viewers, if I can call you that these days. So I've got Tony and Malcolm uh, and Pete. Oh, I still want to call you Caroline every time you come up on here. I'm assuming that uh, the volume's okay and everybody can hear. Cool, excellent. I'll just give everybody a, a, a couple of minutes. Don't know about you guys, but the weather here has been very weird. I think we've had, for the last two days, we've had every type of weather system you could ever think of. Sleet, snow, hail, mist, bit of fog, bit of sunshine, windy. It's absolutely crazy. Don't forget, guys um, and girls, uh, that, <clears throat> you know, check in. It's always good to have uh, to know that people are here. So um, so if you if you're if you're a long time lurker, um, just say hello in the chat um, and then uh, and it makes me feel good anyway. Um, but also um, it sort of uh, um, can stimulate lots of discussion. So if you've got any questions or you want to say anything that's related to tonight's tying, please put it up in the chat and feel free to answer any of the questions uh, everybody as you all know um you know this isn't um just about me telling you stuff this is about us sharing um all of our collective knowledge um don't worry derek um it's all it's all um recorded and copied so i'll stick it up on the uh, uh um on the youtube Channel. Right then, folks. So um, today we are going to be uh, having a play around with micro dries. So why micro dries? Well, often I find, particularly on the river, um, on the itching, you get these these trout in the margins that are just sipping. And and it's really, you can't really tell what they're what they're taking, but they're taking tiny little emerging emerging patterns, and and they won't touch anything um, that is large, or and and quite often won't touch anything that's floating um, uh, um, well up above the waterline. So often I find that you know, particularly later on in 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 the evening, dropping down to a smaller size, but actually something that will just sit in the film um, can bag you that extra bonus fish um also um uh, me on springs in particular as a, as a still water um the primary sort of hatch that we get in the evenings um in the summer spring and summer um is the canis hatch and as we know they're very very small they're called the angler's curse for a very good reason um, and once the fish switch on to those it's very hard to tempt them with anything um that um that's um the, uh, it's very hard to tempt them with absolutely anything. So, so small flies are always worth having some in your box. I don't tie hundreds of them. Um, they're, they're mine. They're, oh, I just blew that. They are exceptionally um, fiddly. But if we look and, and think about all the things I've talked about over the over the last, I was looking the other day. It's twenty two episodes. We've talked about technique and proportion and. This is no different with um, with tiny, tiny little flies. It's choosing the right materials. It's choosing the right threads and in the right sizes um, and and being able to then use the proportions that we've talked about, you know, come in a millimeter. Well, this is now we're talking micrometers, aren't we coming in from the eye so we can leave space, but also utilizing the length of the shank and and the width of the gape now this is uh this hook i've got in here this is a uh, a size 20 
Okay, so this is a TMCO 100 dry fly hook. I can't, I've lost the original box, um, so I put them in these. Well, I think it came in a packet actually. Um, size 20. Um, and I particularly like these because they got that slightly elongated shank. So you can, you've got more to play with here. Um, you'll often find that tiny dry fly hooks will have a little stubby shank and a little tiny, 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 tiny um, gape. And you can't do an awful lot with it. I do have some mustard hooks here somewhere that are, that I think are size 28. But I couldn't, I couldn't actually find them for this evening. So I'm going to save my eyesight. I'm going to work on these 20s and 22s later on um, in terms of thread you can use nano silks you can use very fine threads for these um, I do like for these um, the Semperfly um, spider thread in the 18 or um, for these it's very fine it's um, it's also very strong um, the reason I'm not using nano silks tonight is because I find that nano silks just lie a little bit too flat for these and sometimes I want to build up um, a body section um, and, uh, and it just gives it more definition and more profile so we're going to start off today I'm just going to do a generic sort of um, sort of uh, uh, dry fly um, couldn't actually turn around and say oh this is this particular pattern All right this is this is a, just going to be going to deal with um, with the brown Semperfy spider thread um, and we're just going to build it from there a bit of freestyling um, and we're the key to these is don't make them complicated okay um, if you make them complicated and you try and pack too much on there why bother you haven't got a lot on here to be so most of it can come from the thread so ribbing and things like that but you can actually add extra materials in if you wish so we're going to start off I'm going to tie on here you can probably see that how thin that spider thread is um it's if i un unraveled it it's got it's, it's only got two two strands to it so i can actually use this for some split thread work later on so i'm going to tie it on and i'm just going to start off um about half a millimeter away from the eye um and this is where counting your wraps and touching turns becomes really important so i'm just going to bring this down just give that a pull sticking a little bit um, we're going to bring it down so it's in line with the point of the hook right there i'm going to remove the waist section okay so we've, we've started the the underbody of the fly now the feather i had in the in the vice earlier um comes from a uh, a, a cock de leon um cape there it is and it's in brown um, and there's these beautiful, beautiful feathers with these beautiful markings um, on the larger feathers. So, and it, and it, it got some nice barring. So I'm going to put a little tail on here. I, I don't want a big bushy tail. I'm literally looking for three, possibly four tiny, tiny little barbules. So I'm going to pull them out so that I've got them sticking out so. 90 degrees to the stem and I'm going to carefully just select the ones I want because remember we're not using these at great distance um, you couldn't put a long long cast in well you could but um, you wouldn't actually be able to see the thing um, I find that this is for I find on the river is when I'm I'm getting in close I'm kneeling down or sometimes even lying down and, and I'm just putting a cast in to the to the opposite bank, upstream, just in front of me, just letting it drift down because I can see a fish that's feeding there. So I've got three strands here. All of the ends are um, leveled up. And I want the tail to be the length of the body, and just a little bit longer. So we're going to come in, and I'm going to tie it onto the bare hook shank. So I'm just going to bring it across and allow the thread to bring it over on top of the hook shank. There we go. So we've got it there. Now if you if you think that that's a little bit too long, you can just give it a little pull. Be careful though, because you just a little pull can actually be mean that you pull the whole thing out. Um, and I'm just going to spend a little bit of time just positioning so I've got that there. Now you don't need to put tails on them. 
for some reason this isn't turning um you don't need to put tails on them um but why not and then i'm just going to lift and bring my thread just underneath and bring it round and just cock those up like that now if i keeps going in and out of focus on this one but if i do that i don't know if you can see it splits them into three so we've got a little mini a mini ephemera here if you did it in olive browns and olives you're going to get the um the tiny little olive dry flies that are coming off they were coming off today i was at lech today. today they were coming off very late in the day so i'm going to come in with my scissors my brain is very tired this evening and i'm just going to come in and i'm just going to trim it so that it can form the underbody to give my fly a little bit of definition and then i'm going to work my way back down you can see that the um the spider thread is not is not producing a massive amount of bulk I'm just bringing it down almost to the to the tail end now what you could do here i'm not going to at this point but what you could do here is tie in um some very fine copper wire so 0 0.1 millimeter semperfly tying wire um, um just to give it some durability but what i'm actually actually going to do with this one if i can find it i'll be done with it it's here somewhere i'm going to take did have a black sharpie. Gonna have to go for a brown sharpie. Gonna darken the thread up with my sharpie. Bring it down to the tail, and then I'm gonna use that to form the rib of my fly. It's gone out of focus there, isn't it? The rib of my fly is focusing on my t-shirt. Okay, so the rib of my fly, and I'm going to stop it at that point. Now you could put a wing in, I'm not going to with this one, um, but what I am actually going to do is I'm going to jump to various uh, cock capes that I've got. Um, I've used this one a number of times with us over the last few weeks. So this is um, this is my Mets grade grade one, and the feathers I'm looking for are these tiny feathers at the top here. So on this on the they're off, they can be sold as cape toppers. Nature Spirit do them. I know that if you can get hold of them. But they don't they don't specify colours. So you get a mixed pack and it could be anything. Um, I, I bought one once and I got purple, white and a uh, and a grizzle. Well, you know, I've used them all. And actually, they've come in quite handy. But actually, I would have liked a brown. So I'm looking for a feather here. Down at this, and I'm just gonna check it against the gape of the hook. And what we're looking for is generally the gape of the hook and a half. It could be anywhere within that, but you don't want it too small, and you don't want it really, really, really long. Um, so that looks like a great little feather there. I'm just gonna give that a pull. Now, because we're dealing with really small feathers and very fine feathers, you've got to, your thread tension and your tension on the feather has to be um, your main priority. Because you will snap them, you will pull them out. So there it is. So I've got my feather in there. Okay. Um, let's have a quick little check. So there we go. That's what it's going to look like. So I'm just going to come in, gonna clip off the bottom. And the techniques are exactly the same. I'm going to pull out the bottom sections like that and then I'm going to come in and cut once, cut twice. We're just working on a much smaller scale here. A good set of magnifying glasses help. I've got a pair on at the moment by Magnetize. Um, had them for many years. Ooh, it's not running at all and I'm just going to tie that in and I'm just going to trim off a little bit of the stem here at the end 
Remember, because we put in that ladder effect, hopefully it won't pull out. I'm going to bring my thread back towards the eye. And there we go. And we've tied it in. Now, what you could do here um, is come in and, first of all, I'm going to put a little whip finish just here. Like that. I'm going to take my bobbin cradle, which you can't see, but it is there. Um, and I'm just going to rest my bobbin in the bobbin cradle. Just away. Not liking focusing tonight. And I'm going to take my take my hackle. And I'm going to bring it up in the thorax area. In touching turns, so that's three, four, five, six. Try and get a seventh in there. Yep, there we go. And then I can very carefully just tighten up my, my bobbin. And just bring my thread, wiggle it through, and just hold down that feather. And then I'm going to bring a second, double it, and I'm going to put another one just in front of it. Now, I've only used three there, and um, that purposely only used three. What I have got, though, is a couple of stray little barbules here, which I'm just going to nip off because they'll just annoy me Ooh. like that there we go and then I'm just going to wet my fingers and I'm just going to draw everything back ever so slightly being very gentle and I'm just going to build up the head going backwards just trapping down Gently trapping down that feather just at the front like that. And I'm not putting loads of turns in here because it's only a small fly. And I just snapped my thread. So let's go into emergency thread repair. There we go. I got there's a problem with my spool. Let me just re redo that. So these are the things that happen all the time, particularly when you're using very fine threads. And it caught on the spool then. Uh, just going to, can't see it now. Just going to thread that through my threader. There we go, and bring it back through. Now, the important bit here is that I put a couple of turns in there. So I'm now, to build the head up, I'm now just going to take those off. Now the reason I'm going to do that there is because I need to tie this on. So I'm going to be adding even more than I would normally. So I'll take some off to add some on. So I'm just going to place it on like so. Turn in front. Turn behind. Just looking for my... Now to cut these off, I tend to use a scalpel rather than scissors because it, it gets a cleaner cut. There we go. And let's just go through that again. Let's put one, two, three. There we go. I'll just extend my bobbin down. Now we can put in our whip finish. So one, 
two, three. Tighten it up. Coming close to the scalpel. And there we have it, a nice little Nice little micro dry that hopefully will tempt something that extra bonus fish for you. So use this so you, you tie it in olive, you've got these browns. In fact you could do it black, you got a black midge. The thing with the micro flies is that is that you know they're so small that every individual with a couple of little tweaks can just become something else. Um so I hope I hope you like that one. Including the mess up, but let's see where we go. Even Clapton's strap comes off sometimes. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Tim. You are absolutely right. So we're just going to drop that one out. There. Ooh, it's magnetic. And you know, if in relative terms, you know, if I if I put it in a in a fly clip. Give you the re a relative viewing size. So there's the fly clip and the fly. Okay, right. For the next fly, I'm going to change color because this next fly was a fly that I was introduced to uh, just before COVID actually by a gentleman who asked me if I could tie him some. He gave me a copy of it and said, I want, could you tie me these? Cause these, these work really well late on in the rise um, where I fish um, on the river. Um, and they're, they're pretty much a fail safe. And I said, not a problem. I can tie those. And they are exceptionally easy. And again, I'm, I'm using, um, this time I'm going to use red nano silk um, because the original had a red body, but you could use any. Not nano silk, it's uh, spider thread, isn't it? You can tell my brain's not quite with it tonight. I've had a very busy day today. So the bobbin holder here, um, Eric, it's a, a CNF Designs bobbin holder. Um, and it's got a foam insert, which means that I have to use a threader here. Um, it's got a ceramic, it's a ceramic bobbin, but it does fit really nicely in the hand. Um, it's my preferred bobbin at the moment. I'm sure I'll find another one at some point and I'll go, oh, I quite like this. This is definitely the one at the moment. Right, so I'm gonna go on, um, we'll do this with a 20. We're only gonna use two materials for this fly. Um, it's very, very, very simple. Um, and I suppose, I'm, you know, as a dry fly, it it's very similar to the shipman's buzzer concept. Okay, um, and I'll show you why in a second. So there we go, same same hook. So it's the Tiemco 100 in a size 20. Now, red spider thread, again, about half a millimeter in from the eye, and I'm just going to form. That's better. That one's running much better. Um, just form a touch and turn underbody using the, uh, the tag end to push each turn onto the previous turn. And I'm going to take it up to where the barb should be. Like so. And I'm going to remove the waist end like that. Apologies for this. Uh, it's like because I'm on such a small hook, it's focusing on... On, the, on me in the background um, and then I'm going to take some of this um, uh, Cook's Hill um, uh, CDC this is natural done um, and I don't want lots of feathers I literally want one feather and I'm not even going to use all of that um, and what I'm looking for is some small tufts of CDC for this fly now it didn't have a name 
but I've named it and I call it the Wisp. Um, sort of in homage to Willow the Wisp, for those of you that can remember that wonderful kids TV program. Um, and I'm after just a few or a pinch of this CDC. So I'm looking, I expect to take more, so I'm going to take about a centimetre there and remove it from the stem. And it doesn't matter if you don't get them all lined up because actually it gives a far better impression being mixed. I'm just going to nip off the end bit and then I'm going to bring it in and I'm going to tie it in like I would a tail but onto a thread base, not onto the bare hook. So onto the thread base, like so. There it is. It's not the finished article yet, but that's what we've got so far. And then I'm very carefully going to bring my thread up the hook shank. I take these tufty bits and use the eye as a gauge. I'm just going to come up at about 45 degrees, trim them off. And I'm going to continue making very fine touching turns all the way down to the eye. And then I'm going to go back again because I'm going to build up a thread body here. Now, as I said, you don't have to do this in, in the colours that I'm doing it. Um, it works exceptionally well in in an olive um, with olive CDC to mimic all to mimic well not almost to, to mimic tiny little green fly that are dropping off the trees because often these little sippers are just under the on the bank side aren't they and there's some trees around they're probably feeding on tiny tiny little um, insect falls from the leaves things that we can't see um, and ultimately, we need to be able to have something in the arsenal so that we can actually um, actually have a go at these fish. Um, and I'm just going to take another pinch of CDC, same as before. There we go. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to do the same at the front end. So you can see why I said that it pays homage to the, to, to the shipman's buzzer, I suppose. Um, I'm just going to place it in there. Don't worry about the CDC being overly long at this moment in time. Pinch wrap. Hold it down. Touching turns. It's going to be coming back up. So if you don't get it absolutely touching turns straight away, don't worry. And I'm going to use... Pull these up. And then I'm just going to come in at an angle. Make sure I don't cut the tail off. Trim those down. Missed one there. Let's get rid of that. And use my finger as a guide just to hold down the CDC strands. Like so. Down to the tail. And then back up again. I'm just trying to cover over any bits that I missed. I missed a couple. There we go. That's got one. There we go. And just over there. Now I'm going to lift up this front section, almost wing-like, and build up a little head thread dam at the front, like so. And... Come in. Three turns, whip finish. Give it a pull. Check it's bedded in. Come in with my scalpel and just push the thread against the scalpel. I don't actually cut with the scalpel, it's just pushing it against it. 
and then I'm just going to come in at the back and using my fingers and my nail I'm just going to nip off any really long bits of CDC make that a little bit shorter helps if you've got really long nails don't cut them and there she is now this you can make this the tail section smaller but I found that it just sits very very lovely and sits in the surface film it almost sits on its side like that um, and it almost looks like it's a, it's a spent uh, fly, some sort of spinner. Um, very, very tiny. You can imagine if you did it in white, we've got the covering canis again here um, and some very, very, very uh, small flies. But the red does seem to uh, seem to catch fish. OK, so so in terms of dry flies, micro dries so far. We're half an hour in. We've already done two. They don't take very long. They shouldn't take very long. Um, the whole point is um, that you're mimicking something that is is very, very, very tiny. It doesn't have to have absolute detail to it. Um, we're not fishing these on on long lines thrown right out um, where we can't see them. Um, this is targeting fish. Maybe maybe one little false cast and, and a flick. Um, could even just be a roll cast to get it over, um, you know, with a uh, with a with a parachute stop. So just pull it down so that it, it just the fly straightens out the leader and then flutters down onto the surface. And what what you, what the if you put it up far enough above the fish on the river, um, they you you watch them track it. They they they're looking for it, um, and it's a it's a very very effective pattern. Okay. Uh, Eric, uh, I'd probably use Olive CDC, Eric, um, but you know my take on fly tying. Try different things. Have have them in different colors. I tied them in yellow um, uh, last season, and I caught fish on the itching um, with this fly um, in yellow. So you know it 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 sort of horses for courses, really. Okay. Um, okay. Right. So, uh, what did I do with the other one? So small, I've lost it. Where's it gone? Oh no, it's over there. I got it. Right. Okay. So, um, let's go a bit smaller. Um, let's go to size twenty twos. Um, just to give you an idea that about the difference between a twenty and a twenty two. If I can pick one up. Okay, so here's the size 22. Now remember, the sizing is related, should be related to the size of the gape, um, not necessarily the, the length. Um, so then if I if I put in the size twenty, okay, size twenty is just a little bit bigger, so it's not significantly different, okay. So um, on this one, again, um, another change of thread color. Um, I'm going to come in with black this time. Um, so we're going to sort of sort of look at you know little midges. We get a lot of them. Uh, on the river, we get a lot of them at me on springs. These buzzer midges that come off, and the fish, the fish do switch onto them, and they're often taking them just slightly subsurface. Um, so we can mimic that. He says, "We can thread his bobbin." There we go. Okay, so we're going to do exactly the same. Ooh, what is that caught on there? All right, bear with me. There we go, that's better. So we're going to come in, we're going to start half a millimetre away from the eye. And bring my tying thread. Down 
in line with the hook point. There we go. Uh, now, what did I do with? This time I'm going to use some some more Coq de Leon, but this time it's uh, it's uh, in a black rather than a brown because uh, for this particular fly we're going to we're going to utilize lots of the things we've previously talked about to to mimic midges but but could also mimic um hawthorn fly very small hawthorns um, and i don't want many of these again i'm going to take four i think i'm just going to use my scissors just to separate those out There we go. I think you've got slightly more than that, but it's better to have more than not enough. So just give a couple of pull. Ooh, almost lost them all then. There you go. Now I've got my three. Or so. There they are. This beautiful barry. And again, I'm going to tie these onto the bare hook shank. So up it comes. So it'll sit on the top. Just over rotated that ever so slightly. So I'm just going to take a moment just to bring it back. There's no rush to tie, is there? That's why we've got to keep telling ourselves. And if it doesn't go right, start again. So I wasn't happy with that. So I'm going to come in, do that one again. <coughs> Excuse me. Bring it up onto the top. That's better. Two turns. And just stop and look now that's a bit long for me so i'm just gonna gently just pull those back so it's about a hook shank length there we go and again same technique to bring it under cock out those those three tail sections just take a moment with your nail just to get them positioned and then i'm just going to bring my thread up and trim these off and i'm literally just going to build up little thread body so about two-thirds leaving myself enough space here for any hackle um, but what we're actually going to put in now which I forgot to grab hold of with it here it is Going to use some um, white antron. So, there's my antron, and I'm literally just going to nip off a little bit. Don't need very much on this at all. Now, that's what I've got there, and obviously, that's way too much. So, I'm going to half it. So, just very carefully. in half <coughs> like so just offer that up that's still a little bit too bushy a bit too much on it so i'm just going to take out a couple of fibers because i want to i want the the pretext of a of a wing here it's more for the profile just nip off that pokey little bit there it's more for the profile so I'm just going to bring it in here, just offer it up. I don't want it really long. I've got a bit of ant on there that's really annoying me. There we go. And I'm just going to place it on the top and see what it looks like. See how small I need to go. Give it a little twist in my fingers. You can always trim it down. I might 
be better off doing. I'm just going to pinch wrap it. One. Two. So two little pinch turns. And then. What I'm going to do is just put. A turn behind just to cock it up. And then I'm going to come in. Just remove the waist, but an angle so I get a nice tapered front section, like so. And then I'm going to use the positioning of the bend of the hook to determine the length of my wing. I don't want it long, I want it short, stubby. There we go. And then I'm just going to tidy up this front end, trying wherever possible keep touching turns in play like that there we go it's got a tiny little midge type pattern now I mentioned the cape toppers earlier on these this is these are the ones that I got um, and um, there we go so there's one, it's my grizzle, then this barred white, and they sent me this purple one here. Thing is though, I really like this purple one, I've used it on loads and loads and loads of, uh, of flies, um, and it's the one I've used the most of, so I'm going to use it on this one. So I'm just going to take a purple feather, it doesn't have to be, it could be black, it could be grizzle, you could use whatever you like to be perfectly fair, as long as it catches a fish, and it's going to do the job. You know, we're not we're not displaying these. They're not they're not for uh, for any other purpose other than our own gratification. There we go. Little purple purple hackle. I'm just going to trim the end for my ladder at this end here. And this is where all those techniques come in. So in it goes again, trap it in place, a couple of wraps down, just need to come in with my scissors just to nip the, the very base section off there because it's extending a bit too far, there we go, thread down, thread to the front. Whip finish at this point. Bobbin cradle if you got one. There we go. And I'm going to now touch in turns one, two, three, four. Five, six, and I'm just going to bring my bobbin thread up, bring my hack around to the top, and I'm going to trap it down like we did before, trying not to trap too many barbules at the same time, so once twice, hold everything back and then just come into the front, like that, so there we go, so we've got nicely proportioned um, small hackle, so we're looking at one and a half primarily of the, of the gape of the hook, um, like we've talked about before you could then trim the bottom sections if you like, um, or waft a little flame on them um, so that it sits lower in the water it can often be done at the side of the river and then I'm just going to build up the head so five turns to build up the head taking my time three 
three to whip finish. In it goes. And with a little bit of um, treatment with some dry floatant, um, and because of the stiffness of the hackle on these, um, that will float. That will float just in that surface. Um, ultimately, be sitting. What we'd like it to do is sit like that. So just slightly cocked up in the surface. Up it comes. Down. Strike. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Uh, so, Phil, we've discussed gapes before, yet yeah? A Hanuk 18 would be double the gape, if not more. Do you know what? Because there isn't a universal hook sizing, you know, the Reddit scale doesn't really exist anymore. Um, <laughs> if you took... If you bought an 18 dry fly hook in lots of different um, manufacturers uh, across the board, they would look and the gapes would be exceptionally different. It depends on, on their own individual sizing. My advice is to, to find a hook that you're comfortable with and you, you like working with. Um, partridge hooks are always a good, good um, backstop. Um, okay. Um, Christine from Chevron Hackles did those cape toppers, as you call them. I'll look for those because I've got. Um, I, I do now have a um, uh, a trade account with Chevron, so uh, watch this space for lots more materials that will be appearing. Um, um, and uh, and please have a look on the website for those sorts of things. Uh, Eric, I would tie in a few of those for my next me on visit. Good. Can you tie me some as well? Because I can't be bothered. Um, and uh, and 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 then we can see how they fish now. Uh, only joking. Um, but they don't take long. They don't take long. And you quite happily have quite a few of them um, in your box. You know, and you don't need many. Um, the wisps, I've always got half a dozen in a little compartment in my in my fly box. Um, just so that I can grab those um, when I see a tentative sipper just across from me. Okay. So, so it's a fairly short session tonight. So we're going to do so. That's three flies so far. Um, I'm going to try another one, put another one in, but this time with a slight, slight twist um, and um, more of an emergery type dry fly. Um, and uh, just to show that we can put different materials in. Um, so uh, we're going to come back in. We'll do it on a twenty-two just for giggles. Um, and. Let's just find. Oh, let's close that because I, I do have a tendency to knock them over and drop them. It's where a magnet becomes really important. So there we go. So this next fly, um, we are um, going to go back to. Oh, are we going to go back to that? Let's have a look. Let's think about this. Uh, I wasn't going to. But we will have to. I'm going to go back to the brown spider thread. Okay. Go back to the brown spider thread. Now anything is possible on these flies. You can do split thread work. Um, you can do all sorts of stuff. It's about having the confidence to do it. And remembering that you're just doing what you would normally do on a bigger fly. On a bigger hook. And just keeping the proportions um, in your mind at all times and not being afraid to um, to restart it if it doesn't quite look or doesn't quite go the way you would like it so we're going to start off um, with our brown semperfly spider thread in the 18 I go through a phase where I'll just tie all of my dry flies from, from a 14 down with this particular thread. Um, because I just find it's, it's a really universal thread. Um, and what I'm going to do here is, again, I'm going to start about half a millimetre in. And I'm going to work my way, way back again. Now... And this particular fly, I'm just going to take my thread. Ooh, keeps 
Ah, that's why. It wasn't in, locked in place properly. Um, I'm going to take my thread just slightly round the shank. Oh, the bend. Sorry. Is that of focus again? Okay. I'm just going to bring that off. Just make sure it's where I would like it to be. Yeah, it's looking good. Going to give it another one. There we go. Let's give it another one. And now what I'm going to do is I am just going to change position of the fly. And I'm going to go back to that Antron that I was using earlier. And I only want about half a dozen strands of Antron here. Because we're going to put a trailing shuck at the back of this. So as if it's an emerging little midge. But it just hasn't quite made it yet. So pinch wrap to hold it onto the top. There you go. And then I'm just going to give it a pull. To shorten it. Don't want it really long. There we go. So it looks like so it's the trailing shuck. And we just lock that down. Another turn, and then I'm going to reposition the hook. There we go. And then I'm just going to hold the antron tight i'm going to use the antron now to to slide my touching turns back onto each other so that i get a nice uniform nice uniform body there you go. bring it around taking our time no need to rush Giving it a check. There we go. Yep, nicely checked. And I'm going to bring it about. Oh, just caught that then. Just going to bring it about two thirds of the way, about that, up the shank of the hook. And when I get to that position, I'm just going to use the eye of the hook as my guide, 45 degrees snip and then very gently bind them now like so and then I'm just going to take my thread and as close to touching turns as I can back to the tail end like so now um it's brown thread. I just need a darker colour, so I'm going to use red on this because I can't find my black sharpie. Um, I'm just going to colour this in in red, and I'm going to use that for my rib colour. So as I as I bring it up, I'm going to equal turns, spacing them out. Keeps focusing on my beard tonight, doesn't it? There we go. And back up again. So we've got a... Um, so we've got a, uh, a quite a nice little ribbed effect here. Now, I'm going to turn this into a CDC emerger. So I'm, this is where these tiny little bits of CDC... That you got in your packets come in um, and I've got two here and I'm, I'm just going to two little feathers and I'm just going to match up the tips like so I'm going to match them up so I've got my little tufts like that now that looks like a lot but we're going to reduce that right down in a moment you could reduce it down to one I want a little tuft at this top end. So I'm just going to pinch wrap down. Like 
like so. I'm going to lift this up. And just put a thread down. Ooh, thread's caught again. Thread down just in front of the CDC there. So there it is. Okay. I'll just stop and look. Is that? No, I think that's slightly too long. I'm not 100% happy with that. Need to reduce that down ever so slightly. So I'm actually going to come back. There isn't anything that I can't reposition. So I'm just going to give this a pull through. Cock it up, just have a look. Pull through, much better. And then do that again. It's always worth going back and just being 100% sure. Okay, and we've got it in there. Now, what I'm now going to do is take take some dubbing um, and oh, to be honest the choice is yours I've got loads of different colors I, I tend to go on which one haven't I used recently I like this little cinnamon color and we're using browns here so I've got this cinnamon scruffy dubbing um, and I just want literally a tiny little um, amount of it what I'm gonna do is gonna hold it hold it in my left hand and I'm just gonna offer it up to the thread and I'm going to use my my right finger uh, forefinger and thumb just to just to touch it onto the thread and pushing it up and if you get any long bits I've got a really long bit there I'm just going to pull that pull that out just push it up and then I'm going to keep any extra in this thing in these fingers here because I might need that in a minute. And I'm just going to cover over these wraps. And then I'm just going to come in just in front. Of my CDC. There we go. I've got these sections at the back here that I haven't done anything with yet. Um, and what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to find my two feathers or as close to my two feathers as I can like that and I'm just going to push them out side to side and then I'm going to take this CDC here and just bring it across so it pushes out Ooh, just moved that fiddly these little these little flies I'm just gonna I can come back to it in a second and I'm just gonna take my thread and just drop it over over that reverse section of CDC I'm just gonna spend a little bit of moment just positioning those wings and I'm gonna put another locking turn in just hold it up and have a look. There we go. Mm. And a third, once I'm happy. And then one in front. Okay. Now notice what I'm doing here is I'm just holding my thread just further back. And I'm going to come in with my scissors and just give this a trim. Because we're quite close to the eye here, and I don't want my thread to come off. I'm just going to push these back, and then I'm just going to build up. So we've got almost we've got a not almost we've got a, a, almost a spent style fly. It's going to sit, and we've got a trailing chuck there as a as an extra. It's almost like it's it hasn't fully emerged. It's a bit crippled, um, 
it's going to be in the surface flow and Mr or Mrs Trout is going to go right that's an easy easy lunch an easy lunch date there for me and then at this point we come in with just extend that a bit draw these back there we go come in with our whip finish tool just going to hold the wings back one two three not quite right And there we go. Nip that off. And we've got our tiny size 22 spinner um, crippled a merger that's going to be sitting in the surface. I can just imagine that dropping down in the slack water down the side um, with the tail end just pushing down into the water surface. The CDC just holding it in the men meniscus of the water. Um, and something's going to come up and have a go at that. Okay. Um, let's have a look. Right, so what have we got? Um, micro nymphs for the catch and release. We'll talk about that in a minute, Phil, if that's okay. Um, what tippet would you use for these? Um, we'd be looking at, at very fine, probably down to down to two pounds. Um, you know, ultimately, um, you know, there are on, on the, on the Mion catch and release, there are, there are some big, big bruiser, um, rainbows in there that will come up. Um, so you, you, you know, you're going to have to be, your finesse is going to have to be there. Um, I'm talking on these mainly that I'm going to be, be rivers, but you know, for the, for the, the smaller browns and things like that, absolutely fine. And you can land, you can land a big fish on light tippet. Um, it depends on the um, uh, uh, the amount of force that you apply um, to the fish in the first place. Um, the uh, yeah, what you could do as well, and I haven't done it here. But what you could do is, as part of the underbody, you could tie in the tippet so through the eye, underneath tie it in so that it's all secured as one so you don't have to keep tying them you have them on have them on a, on a, on a, on a, on a leader which you then um, attach loop to loop connection or uh, or surgeon's knot um, on the riverbank um, and then you know you've already got them tied on because you can imagine trying to get a tip it through there it's going to be a it could be a tough ask. You'll notice I haven't put any varnish on there because it's hard enough as it is. I'm not going to not going to uh, at the ante um, being on the river by sticking some varnish over it and getting it all in the eye. Uh, yeah, Daniel, tricky pattern. It is, um, but what I'm trying to show here um, for our for our regular viewers is that technique trumps pattern um, and you can apply a, a technique that you would use on a much larger fly to a very very small fly you just reduce it down I, I know it sounds obvious but keeping those scales and using the, the shank of the hook um, as your um, as your guide is key okay and it also helps, and I'll be very honest, um, good quality tying materials trump crap tying materials. You tie with crap, crap cheap tying materials. Personally, you're going to get cheap crap flies. That might be a bit contentious, but there you go. Um, if, you, if you can, you know, I'm not saying go spend loads of money, spend what you can afford, but, <clears throat> you know, good quality hackle. <laughs> you're gonna tie dry flies really i i wouldn't really be be messing around too much with indian cock capes um i'd be investing um something uh, a really nice brown you know cape like this and i know i tie lots of dry flies for other people um i can get through this but that will that will last you years 
absolutely is and these larger feathers here come into play on so many other patterns later on um, absolutely fantastic right then guys i hope you've enjoyed that um i'm gonna call it a day now i'm absolutely shattered i've been at lech laid all day as uh, neil mundy uh, mentioned out here it was good fishing with you as well neil um my brain is fried um but if you've not fished Letch Laid, give it a go. <coughs> and I'll take some photos and I'll get those up. Uh, I'm back on the water again tomorrow. Um, but Sunday, I'll be able to take all the photos and, uh, and, and get those up so you can see what these really look like without it focusing in on my beard. Okay. Yeah, Dan, you're absolutely right. In terms of the, the crowding, that's why right at the beginning, it's really important to leave your space and don't be tempted to fill that space because that is the space that you're going to form your head. Um, and if you look back on all our previous um, uh, um, videos, um, I've been at great pains to say that all the way through. But yeah, you're absolutely right. And and overcrowding the head is is very much something that um that takes time it takes a bit of practice um and just remember it no i've got to start here i've got to start here i've got to start here it's when you get those patterns where actually you have to start close into the eye where it, <laughs> you then go oh man there's always an exception to the rule okay um but uh, don't forget like subscribe on the youtube channel Come and see me on the on the uh, on the website. Come and buy some buy some kit. Um, lots more stuff will be going up there, but there's some great stuff up there at the moment. Um, and uh, and I'll hopefully I might not see you next week because I'm going to Tenerife. So uh, so um, I'll, I'll I won't be around for a couple of weeks, but um, it'll give me time to think of some new patterns. And by that time, I'll have got back on the river as well, folks. Okay, so um, watch this space, but. Have a good Easter, everybody.